السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hello everybody Welcome to Radiology course for undergraduate I am Alaa Muhammad Rida Lecture of Radio Diagnosis Today we will talk about basics for imaging of the upper GIT Our lecture objectives is three thick sections First one is methods of examination of the upper GIT Second one is normal radiological anatomy of the upper GIT and the third one is common pathological diseases of the upper GIT. Let's start with the first one is methods of examination of the upper GIT. First, plain x-ray. Second one is contrast studies which fill the lumen of the GIT or just coating of its mucosa or wool. Maybe just to the level of the esophagus called, called barium swallow or reach the stomach called barium meal or reach the small intestine, jejunal and ileal loops called barium follow through or injected by enema through the rectum or rectal enema called barium enema to examine the colon or large bowel. This is the most important for our level to know plain x-ray or contrast studies. But there is another modalities for examination of the GIT, such as ultrasound, CT or computed tomography, MRI or magnetic resonance imaging, pulp examine cross-sectional anatomy in very accurate way, and isotope scanning to assess the function more than anatomical details of the GIT. Let's start with the most important, which is plain X-ray. Plain X-ray machine like in this image, patient could be examined in either supine position or erect position. Supine position, patient is lying on the table in this supine position and the x-ray tube or machine is in front of the patient and the x-ray passing in a divergent manner through the examined part, the abdomen and the pelvis, to penetrate on the other side to reach the receptor or the film. This is the erect position and the machine is in front of the patient and the film is posterior to the patient so the patient is examined in anteroposterior manner. In contrast to the chest the patient is examined in posteroanterior manner but in the abdomen and pelvis it is anteroposterior view. Importance of supine anteroposterior view of the plain x-ray in abdomen and pelvis to assess radio-opaque shadows as stones in the uh, kidney, gallbladder, foreign bodies, or pancreatic calcifications or calcifications in the blood vessels as the abdominal aorta or its branches. But the erect position importance is to the assess the air in the bowel loops. So in cases of bowel perforation, the air ascend upward and extend uh, extra luminal so if there is free air under the frame which is abnormal this is characteristic for pneumoperitoneum in cases of bowel perforation also in cases of intestinal obstruction either functional obstruction or mechanical obstruction the fluid in the bowel loops which is stagnant the air ascend upward if the patient in the erect position so in cases of multiple flow air fluid level in the abdomen it is characteristic and consistent with intestinal obstruction how to differentiate between these two images this one is supine and this one is erect position the supine view examine the bone the soft tissue shadows and any abnormal calcifications or denistas but in the erect position we can see the gastric air bubble which form air fluid level in the stomach as the air ascend upward in the erect position so look to the left upper quadrant just under the left hemidiaphragm if there is lucency in the stomach in the stomach area so this gastric bubble means that the film is in the erect position in this case also there is multiple air fluid level 
here and here and there with multiple dilated bowel loops this is consistent with intestinal obstruction so the film here is in the erect position and here no gastric air bubble with air fluid level in the region of the stomach it is supine position the second modality is contrast studies of the GIT as we say before if filling the esophagus called contrast swallow stomach contrast kneel if reaching the small intestine contrast follow through and if reaching the large intestine by rectal enema called contrast enema two types of contrast could be used maybe in the form of white powder called barium sulfate and adding water or fluid on this powder making it like a paste and the patient is ingested it through the mouth so if filling the esophagus only will be barium uh, barium, barium swallow if, re, um, if adding more fluid or more water to it making it more fluidy then will reach the stomach it will co be called barium meal making it more fluidy by adding water or fluids to the uh, suspension uh, then it will, uh, it will reach the uh, small bowel or jejunal and ileal loops it will be called then uh, barium follow through and if it injected by rectal enema through the rectum and the anal canal it will be called rectal enema or barium enema the second type is water soluble contrast or gastrographene which is water soluble fluidy contrast can, could be also uh, used by either ingestion or injection uh, by rectal enema so we have two types of contrast could be used barium sulfate as a suspension or water soluble as gastrographene these diagrams for GIT with no contrast inside and there is two, two types of contrast could be used in the GIT either single contrast as we say before either barium sulfate or water soluble gastrographene completely filling the GIT lumen if we inject or the patient inject air after ingestion of the contrast so the air will replace the um, contrast in the lumen and will fill the lumen with lucency and dark lucency of the air and the contrast will be just coating the wool and the mucosa of the GIT it will be called, uh, called double contrast so we have two types single contrast and double contrast how to differentiate between the two images this is picture is consistent with rectal enema we know it by enema here in the region of the rectum and contrast or bright or white color completely filling the colon so it is rectal enema this is the rectum sigmoid colon descending colon splenic flexure transverse colon hepatic flexure and ascending colon and the white color of the contrast is completely filling the lumen of the colon so it is single contrast study or single contrast barium enema but in double contrast we can see the lucency or dark air black air filling the lumen of the colon and there is only residual contrast seen coating the wall or the mucosa of the colon which make it uh, more better for characterization of any small mucosa lesions or ulcerations we can see here the hostration of the colon more properly than in single contrast uh, study so this is single contrast and this is double contrast study in contrast study film we must comment as a radiologist on the course of the examined part of the GIT and its caliber either normal or area of narrowing or occlusion the contour regular or irregular or there is outpouching or 
uh, any abnormality of the contour, the filling and the evacuation of the examined part, and the mucosal lining, and uh, it's more better to be assessed in the double contrast study than the single contrast study. Diagrams for the abnormalities of the GIT. The caliber may be changed, either by, uh, by narrowing or dilatation, may be filling defect of the examined part, may be outpouching or diverticulum of the uh, examined uh, part of its wall, and the mucosa may be ulcerated, more better to be assessed in double contrast study, or complete perforation of the wall with leak of the contrast outside the um, the wall of the GIT and the wall contour may be abnormal or compressed or displaced by external lesion whatever lymph node mass so may cause external compression the first section is finished let's go to the second one which is normal radiological anatomy of the upper GIT the upper GIT started from the mouth to the oropharynx reaching the esophagus the esophagus descend downwards behind the trachea, downwards to penetrate the diaphragmatic uh, esophageal hiatus, till opening in the cardiac uh, orifice of the stomach, and the gastroesophageal junction extending to the stomach with the body, the more upward region called the fundus of the stomach, and the body has the lesser curvature and the greater curvature of the stomach, ending by the pyloric region to the gastroduodenal junction with its fourth part, first part, second part, third part, and the fourth part, which extends slightly upward to end in the duodenojejunal flexure or duodenojejunal junction, which is the end of the upper GIT level. After that, it will uh, begin the uh, lower GIT, which uh, composed of jejunum, ileal loops, large bowel or the colon with its components still reaching the rectum and anal canal and the lower GIT will be discussed in another separate lecture. This is the normal barium swallow and normal uh, appearance of the phalanx. How to know its barium swallow? This is the cervical vertebrae. This is the mandible and the teeth. This is the skull base. So it is barium swallow. We are uh, still upwards and this is the normal appearance of the pharynx. Double contrast study, air is filling the lumen and the contrast or barium is just coating the mucosa, residual barium, just coating its wall or its mucosa with normal appearance of the mucosa, no abnormal uh, ulcerations, abnormal filling defects. This is normal collection of the barium or contrast in the oropharynx upward to collections uh, called two valiculi on both sides and downward collections called, called barrier reform fossa on both sides. This is the normal appearance of the pharynx. Slightly downwards, this is still barium swallow. We can see the esophagus. This tubular structure is called the esophagus and this is barium swallow single contrast because we see the uh, barium or contrast completely filling the uh, lumen of the esophagus. This is the normal appearance. No filling defect, no abnormalities of the contour of the caliber, no outpouching, no abnormalities of the mucosal lining. This is accepted peristaltic wave or peristaltic motion of the esophagus. So it is normal appearance of the esophagus in barium swallow. Another appearance of normal esophagus in barium swallow. Another one, but it is double contrast as the air is filling the lumen with its black leucency and there is residual, uh, only residual contrast just coating the wall or the mucosa. No abnormalities or ulceration of the mucosa. This is the normal gastroduodenal junction. Normally to be below the level of the left hemidiaphragm, if it is slightly upwards, it is a sliding hiatus hernia and will be discussed in the pathological diseases of the GIT. These pictures all show the normal appearance of the esophagus in the barium swallow. We descend downward to reach the stomach. This is the cardiac orifice. 
ending in the stomach, begin with the fundus, the body, the lesser curvature, the greater curvature, and this is the pyloric region, beginning with the pyloric antrum, the widest portion of the pyloric region. Antrum means the widest portion of the, of the thing, so it is the pyloric antrum. This is the pyloric canal, and this is the pylorus, or, py or pyloric orifice. If we see the stomach from inside, it, sh it will show multiple rougie or elevations of the mucosa called gastric rougie, and this is normal. This is the normal appearance of the barium meal. We can see the stomach. It, it will be called barium meal, body of the stomach, lesser curvature, greater curvature, normal gastric rougie, and end with the pyloric antrum pyloric orifice and duodenal cap which is the first part of the duodenum and the duodenal lobe here this is normal appearance of the stomach no filling defect no masses no out pouching or no ulceration this is also the pyloric antrum and the pyloric orifice with the duodenal cap which is the first part of the duodenum also the duodenum here is normal Another picture for the normal duodenal pulp. These images all show the normal appearance of the barium meal again and again with its normal gastric rougie. We will start now with the third section and this is the most important section for the exam. The common pathological diseases of the upper GIT. To get the full comment and the full mark in the exam, you should write two sections in the answer. The first one is the full comment on the type of the examination and either plain or contrast study. And th the second one is the sign or the disease you can see in the image. We will start with this image. To comment on the type of the examination, it is plain X-ray of the chest and the abdomen and posterior view showing air lucency under the diaphragm consistent with bowel perforation or pneumoperitoneum normally there is no air under the diaphragm at all if there is air under the diaphragm means the patient is in the erect position so the first the full comment of this picture is plain x-ray of the chest and the abdomen and posterior view in the erect position must write the erect position there is air under the frame, pneumo peritoneum, another one, erect position, pneumo peritoneum, another one for plain x ray of the chest and the abdomen, erect position, consistent with pneumo peritoneum or air under the frame, is very important in exam. This slide, another one, normally there is no air lucency under the diaphragm at all, so. If we see air lucency or blackness under the diaphragm, it, it is pathological or abnormal, it is pneumoperitoneum. Another one for pneumoperitoneum. The second pathology is stones in the region of the gallbladder. This film is plain x-ray of the abdomen and troposterior view showing gallbladder stones. Another one for gallbladder stones. Gold bladder stones again. Another pathology is plain x ray and posterior view. The region of the pancreas here showing multiple dots of calcifications in the region of the pancreas. The full comment of this picture is plain x ray and posterior view of the abdomen showing multiple pancreatic calcifications. Another calcification that could be detected in the abdomen is in the region of the abdominal aorta and its branches. We can see here plain x-ray of the abdomen as no contrast we can see. So it is plain x-ray, anthroposterior view as the vertebrae is in the midline and the iliac bone on both sides, the ribs here. And this is view is lateral view as the vertebrae is, one si is on one side and the ribs is anteriorly to it there is large calcified lesion here large calcified lesion here 
consistent with calcification of aneurysm in the abdominal aorta. Aneurysm means dilatation of the blood vessel. When we inject contrast material in the blood vessels of the patient, the abdominal aorta, see here, filled with contrast with aneurysmal dilatation in its middle portion, which was calcified in plain X-ray. So plain X-ray is important to detect abdominal aorta aneurysm. Let's start with the pharyngeal region, the pharynx. We know here that we are in the region of the pharynx because the, we can see the cervical vertebrae of the neck. So we are in the region of the pharynx still upwards. We can see here foreign body in the region of the pharynx. We can comment on the picture, plain x-ray, lateral view as the vertebrae is here and the mandible is here. Plain X-ray of the neck, lateral view showing foreign body of the pharynx. We can descend downwards. If we see the chest here, so if we see foreign body in this region, it will be the region of the esophagus. The full comment is plain X-ray of the chest, posterior anterior view. The chest is posterior anterior view, but the abdomen is antero posterior view. In this picture, the chest, we will see um, plain X-ray, posterior anterior view of the chest, showing foreign body of the esophagus. Here is lateral view, as the vertebrae is one side, and the sternum on the other side, plain X-ray of the chest, lateral view, showing foreign body of the esophagus. We can see here contrast material which is this density, filling the esophagus, the uh, tubular structure. But there is multiple areas of narrowing and areas of dilatation in the esophagus along its course. This uh, disease is uh, called tertiary contractions of the esophagus. Tertiary contractions of the esophagus is multiple non-functioning, non-propulsive contractions occur in the esophagus. Uh, which um, uh, presented by severe uh, chest pain in the region of the esophagus with dysphagia and pain during the swallowing. We can detect by barium swallow. We full comment in this picture is barium swallow, as we see the esophagus, showing multiple tertiary contractions. Another pathology in the region of the esophagus. We can see the esophagus and the cervical vertebrae. So we uh, will comment, it is barium swallow, showing outpouching of the esophageal wool. There is also outpouching of the esophageal wool called esophageal diverticulum. Full comment is plain uh, barium swallow or contrast swallow show esophageal diverticulum. Another one is hiatus hernia. Hiatus hernia is elevation upward of the gastroesophageal junction above the level of the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm and the gastroesophageal junction is above the level of the diaphragm. How to know the gastroesophageal junction? It is the change in the mucosal lining. Change of the mucosal lining between the gastric rougie here and the uh, esophageal uh, mucosal lining. The connection between these two mucosal lining is called gastroesophageal junction. Normally, it is below the level of the diaphragm. In this case, it is slightly upward, so it is called hiatus hernia. Another one, the gastroesophageal junction is above the level of the diaphragm. So this is barium swallow showing hiatus hernia, elevation of the gastric gastroesophageal junction above the level of the diaphragm. Another pathology of the esophagus is gastroesophageal uh, structure, which is permanent narrowing of the esophagus and the changing of its caliber. Here we can see long segment of esophageal structure or narrowing. Whatever the cause is uh, congenital or post-corrosive ingestion, most commonly due to post-corrosive ingestion in children. We full comment barium uh, swallow of the esophagus showing esophageal structure. Another picture for 
long segment of esophageal structure with proximal dilatation. Another disease and pathology of the esophagus is achalasia of the cardia. Achalasia, normally the esophagus with normal caliber ending in the gastroesophageal junction to open into the stomach. But in the disease of achalasia, occur in the middle age, there is persistent narrowing of the cardiac uh, orifice or gastroesophageal junction and there is dysphagia uh, uh, occur in uh, ingestion of fluids more than solids with proximal dilatation of the esophagus causing mega esophagus and this narrowing is called bird peak appearance like a peak of the bird this is the barium swallow as there is barium filling the esophagus but also we can see the stomach so may call the barium swallow uh, slash meal there is the sign here is bird beak appearance of the cardiac uh, end of the esophagus with smooth narrowing and proximal dilatation of the esophagus with fluid level from stagnation of uh, food component and fluids in the esophagus Another one, there the big appearance of the cardiac uh, end of the esophagus with proximal marked dilatation of the esophagus. There is marked dilatation of the esophagus because it is long-term uh, benign process, so take long-term of uh, the disease, posing a mega esophagus or marked dilatation of the esophagus. The mucosa is smooth here, no irregularities, no shouldering. Another pathology for the esophagus is benign esophageal mass, like this, causing regular filling defect of the esophagus. Another one, normal mucosal lining, no irregularities, no shouldering. Another appearance for benign looking uh, filling defect of the esophagus as food polus here and the contrast is surrounding it with normal mucosa this is a picture for malignant esophageal mass causing a regular filling defect with shouldering of the esophagus shouldering is very characteristic for malignancy with red tail appearance of the esophagus and proximal mild dilatation due to rapid process of malignancy, not long-term process as in achalasia. Another one for red tail appearance of the esophagus with mild dilatation, just mild dilatation of the proximal portion. Another one for malignant mass, irregularities, regular filling defect, malignant mass with shouldering here, red tail appearance of the esophagus, and the mild dilatation of the esophagus malignant esophageal mass. Full comment is barium swallow showing regular filling defect esophageal malignant mass with red tail appearance. This picture is slightly difficult, but uh, we have to know. This is a picture of CT scan, axial or transverse cut of the chest. This is the esophagus showing regular soft tissue mass filling it normally the esophagus is slightly sl smaller than this uh, picture and filled with air not filled with soft tissue mass this is malignant esophageal mass another pathology for the esophagus is esophageal varices esophageal varices that occur in cases of um, portal hypertension with dilatation of the gastroesophageal portosystemic anastomosis this venous anastomosis represented in barium swallow as serviginous irregular filling defects in the esophagus not filled with contrast we comment here barium swallow showing multiple serviginous filling defects of the esophagus representing esophageal varices these pictures and images representing all esophageal varices we finish the esophagus let's go to the stomach and the duodenum the first pathology of them is gastric dilatation, it's plain x-ray here, not 
No contrast is seen. It is plain X-ray of the abdomen and troposterior view showing marked dilatation of the gastric air uh, of the gastric air of the stomach. Gastric dilatation. Another one is gastric ulcer. Here there is contrast meal or barium meal. This is the stomach. We can see so-called barium meal or contrast meal. There is outpouching of the uh, wool of the stomach. Another outpouching. Outpouching filled with contrast representing the gastric ulcer like in this diagram. Another pictures for gastric ulcer. Outpouching filled with contrast just uh, we can see in face or in profile. Another small outpouch filled with contrast. Barium meal also showing outpouch filled with contrast, gastric ulcer. Another pathology of the stomach is uh, gastric mass or malignant mass. Uh, the gastric ulcer is outpouched to outside, but the gastric malignant mass is invading the lumen to the inside of the stomach. So in barium meal here, the greater curvature is invaded inward by malignant mass. There is irregular mass invading the uh, wall to the lumen. Another one, the lesser curvature of the barium meal is invaded by irregular malignant gastric mass. Full comment here is barium meal showing irregular malignant mass uh, malignant gastric mass from the lesser curvature here is a regular malignant gastric mass from the greater curvature this is the picture of CT scan slightly difficult one the stomach is here filled with contrast and there is large soft tissue irregular mass arising from its wall to invade the lumen it is malignant gastric mass Another form for gastric malignancy is linitis plastica, which is persistent irregular narrowing of the lumen of the stomach with a small non-distensible lumen. Another one. This picture of barium meal is called linitis plastica, which is form of gastric malignancy. Another form of gastric malignancy, barium meal, full through. As we see, the small bowel is filled with contrast, and there is here the, less, the greater curvature is invaded by mass in this region of the pylorus. It is gastric mass. Another picture for CT scan of the abdomen, axial cut or transverse cut, showing mass in the stomach, uh, gastric mass. We finished the stomach. Let's go to the duodenal lesions or pathologies. This uh, film is plain X-ray as we uh, can't see any contrast uh, in the uh, film. Plain X-ray, anthroposterior view of the abdomen showing two leucenses of air called double, den uh, double bubble sign. If we uh, see double bubble sign only in the abdomen or double air leucenses in the abdomen with the remaining abdomen is completely uh, absence of air it's called double bubble sign means that the stomach and the duodenum is only filled with leu uh, with air with complete occlusion of the uh, lumen after that uh, region or duodenal atresia and the remaining abdomen is completely gasless with no air filling the lumen of the remaining bowel loops. This is a picture of duodenal atresia. The full comment of the picture is plain X-ray of the abdomen, anthroposterior view, erect position, showing double bubble sign of duodenal atresia. Another pathology for duodenal region is duodenal ulcer. This is the normal duodenal cap. And this is the, no the picture of duodenal ulcer. There is collection of barium in the region of the duodenum. Another picture of duodenal ulcer, but it's 
quite difficult to uh, be in the exam. This is a barium meal full through as we see the uh, lumen of the small bowel filled with contrast material. The stomach is um, markedly displaced and compressed by uh, lesion in this region. This is anteroposterior view as uh, the uh, spine is in the middle of the image and this view is lateral view. We can see here uh, a lesion could displace and uh, compress the stomach markedly to the uh, anterior position. This is the region of the pancreas. So it has many differential diagnoses uh, for lesion, a large lesion compress and displace the stomach uh, anteriorly. This case was pseudopancreatic cyst that occur after a case of uh, pancreatitis, but the, it has many differential diagnoses as uh, cancer uh, pancreas or large uh, abdominal uh, aortic aneurysm or a large uh, lymphadenopathy. Many differential diagnoses, but this case was pseudopancreatic cyst. To full comment, it's uh, barium meal follow through, anteroposterior and lateral view show marked displacement and compression of the stomach anteriorly by pseudopancreatic cyst. Another picture, this is lateral view of the barium meal follow through, marked displacement of the stomach anteriorly by pseudopancreatic cyst. This is a picture of CT scan transverse section. This is collection or cystic lesion in the region of the pancreas, complete, uh, completely displacing the stomach anteriorly and compressing it. It is another picture for pseudopancreatic cyst in CT scan. This is barium meal follow through, as we can see the uh, small bowel uh, filled with contrast material. This is the region of the pancreas and the duodenum here, duodenal loop is widened and its mucosa is regularly invaded with irregular outlines. Uh, it is picture of pancreatic head mass as the pancreatic head is in this region and the body is in this uh, area. Um, so full comment on this picture is barium male full through showing widening and uh, di uh, dilatation of the duodenal loop with irregular outlines of the mucosa picture of pancreatic head mass. We finished the lecture but to revise again We have many, pathology, many uh, methods for examination of the upper GIT. The most important is plain X-ray, either in the supine or in erect position. Erect position importance to assess free air under the frame, pneumoperitoneum, or multiple fluid air fluid level in intestinal obstruction. Importance of erect position to be known by the gastric air bubble in the left upper quadrant. Contrast studies, either by barium or by water-soluble contrast gastrographene. Maybe single contrast or double contrast. This is the normal pharynx, normal esophagus in single contrast barium swallow, normal esophagus in double contrast barium swallow, normal appearance of the barium meal, the pathologies, Plain X-ray, full comment is plain X-ray of the chest and abdomen, anteroposterior view in the erect position, showing pneumoperitoneum or air un free air under diaphragm. Another pictures. Plain X-ray of the abdomen, anteroposterior view showing multiple gallbladder stones. Plain X-ray of the abdomen, anteroposterior view showing pancreatic multiple pancreatic calcifications. Plain X-ray of the abdomen, anteroposterior view and the lateral view showing calcification of the abdominal aortic aneurysm. Plain X-ray of the neck, lateral view showing foreign body of the pharynx. Plain X-ray of the chest, posterior anterior view and lateral view showing foreign body of the esophagus. 
Barium swallow show tertiary esophageal contractions. Barium swallow showing esophageal diverticulum. Barium swallow showing hiatus hernia. Barium swallow show esophageal structure. Barium swallow show bird beak appearance with marked mega esophagus and the fluid level. Achalasia of the cardia. Barium swallow show irregular malignant mass with shouldering and mucosal irregularities, red tail appearance, malignant esophageal mass. Another picture. This slide is very important for the exam. Another important slide for the exam is esophageal varices, multiple serpiginous filling defects of the esophagus. Plain X-ray of the abdomen showing gastric dilatation. Barium meal showing a gastric ulcer, multiple gastric ulcers. Another example, barium meal show gastric mass, CT scan showing gastric mass, barium meal full throw showing gastric mass, linitis plastica. Another picture for barium meal full throw gastric mass, CT scan for gastric mass, plain x-ray of the abdomen, erect position, double bubble sign of duodenal atresia. Duodenal ulcer, barium full through, barium meal full through, anteroposterior and lateral view of pseudopancreatic cyst. Another one. And the last one is barium meal full through for pancreatic head mass. Hope you enjoy our uh, lecture and it was fruitful and interesting. Thank you very much for your listening and see you soon, inshallah.